So boys and girls and ladies and gentlemen, moms and dads and friends, grandparents, I'm so excited. Oh, Carl, you like fish, you're going to love this session. I, we're connecting to OceanWise who are at the Vancouver Aquarium in Vancouver, British Columbia. And this is Nicole, and she's one of the scientists there. And oh, it's so exciting to be able to see the fish and the, the marine mammals that are swimming behind us and the reptiles and all of the things that are in the tanks. And we're so grateful that you were able to connect. And I see that great big sea turtle again. So I'm going to turn it over to, to uh, Nicole, and she's going to talk about how animals are camouflaged in the oceans. Now, what we're going to do, boys and girls, is I'm going to keep track of the chat, and we're going to um, stop a couple of times throughout it. If you have questions, could you please um, just, we'll ask them at one time at a couple of times during the session, we'll stop and ask Nicole some questions. But I'll read your comments and we'll comment back and forth. I like turtles and sharks too. So I'm gonna turn it over to, uh, to Nicole and we'll talk about camouflage. Yeah, thank you very much, Molly. So welcome all of you guys to the Vancouver Aquarium. So now the Vancouver Aquarium, we are here and we have also guests is uh, behind me so we have the great uh the great black wave t uh, shark here and then also we have the sea turtles called Skuna to be with us today so i hope you have a great time and then we were learning about some cool stuff and some superpowers that animals have uh in our ocean so vancouver aquarium here is in vancouver and uh we're very happy to share our information and knowledge here in this piece of traditional land of the coast Spanish people including musquin um squamish and also slave Tooth nations so um today we're going to look for fish and also to talk about a bit uh, protection measure that all animals have in order to protect themselves in their habitats. So just now I noticed that some of you actually love sharks, whales, turtles, and even fish. Yeah, so awesome. So I love camouflage a lot because it's a very cool kind of protection that all animals have in order to protect themselves because as you can see from our gallery here, we have corals at the bottom. We might have plants in some area in the earth, in the ocean. And also we may not see any other creatures like this habitat that we call open water. So that means there's no plant for, or corals for animals to hide themselves. And so they have camouflage to hide themselves or blend themselves into the environment using their body structure and also the lightings that uh, happens around their habitats. So I would like you to think of what kind of animals do you think they have camouflage as their protection? So my question is, what animals have camouflage? So try to type in to the comment box so that I can take a look at it. Gecko, octopus, lizard. I saw sea anemone. Wow. With lizards. That is so cool. So octopus is one of the famous one that we can learn about how they actually camouflage by themselves. So for information, ca uh, camouflage is something that uh, the animals have like uh, on their body structure or even for um, the behavior so that they can try to protect themselves in different kind of habitats. So octopus, they're very, very smart and they have a color pigment on their body, on their skin so that they can contract or even try to relax their cell and try to release those pigments uh, on their skin so that they try to pretend part, to be part of the um, habitat they have, such as coral reefs or even, even a little kind of rock or even a stone. So it's very cool. But today we're not going to talk 
about the octopus, but I want to tell you about three other kind of animals that they have very awesome camouflage style. So let me give you one picture to look at right now. So as we mentioned before, behind me, we have a very nice gallery here. And that gallery is about sharks. So now I'm going to show you a picture of a shark. So this is the shark. So I love sharks a lot because they are very smart predators and they do have things on their body in order to uh, hide themselves and try to outsmart their prey. So this is the shark that we have and is called the black teeth reef shark. So you can see it in the Maldives or in tropical areas like Indonesia as well. So what is so cool about them is that they have two kind of colors on their body. So on the upper part of the body is darker in color, but if you take a look at the lower part of its body, it is actually lighter in color. So they usually live in open area. And what they do is they actually play with the light tanks around them, try to hide themselves from the prey because they want to be sneaky. They want to hide somewhere else so that they can catch their prey in a second. So this kind of camouflage that sharks have is called, ca uh, is called counter shading. So what they do is actually they try to swim near the surface of the water. So if you're a little fish, just imagine you are a little fish and you swim underneath that sharks. And when you swim, you cannot see any sharks that actually swim above you because the tummy, the white color of the sharks actually blends into the surface of the water. So it's looked like the color of the sky. So it's like for because of the cool vision of the fish they have, so they cannot distinguish whether it is a shark or is it only the water surface or not. So it's one kind of um, trick that the sharks have in order to protect or to hide themselves from prey. And if you imagine yourself uh, swimming as a fish on top of that shark, you may not notice that shark that is swimming beneath you as well because if you take a look at the uh, back of the sharks, it's actually darker in color. And again, it blends into the color of the sea floor. So the little fish with poor vision, they might not see the sharks that's actually swimming nearby. So by that time, that smart predators, sharks, they can actually swim very sneaky and they swim very fast in order to capture that shark. Uh, the prey like fish or squid at once and within seconds. So this is one of the coolest things that I like for sharks. So it's called counter shading. And other animals that I would like you to take a look at is actually called pipe fish and is actually appear in our sea wall here in the Stanley Park near Vancouver Aquarium. So I'm going to show you another picture and there is a little game for you. So I want you to try to find out where is that pipe fish are. So let me share my screen again. So try to use five or 10 seconds time in order to try to find that pipe fish. Five, four, three, two, one. So where is the pipefish? It's right here. So besides counter shading, like sharks or even turtles or even stingray have, some fish, they do not have counter shading. So what they do to escape from predators is that they try to have a very slim body that's similar to the environment like this. So now, if you take a look at this picture, you will see the eel grass that we have here in British Columbia. And the arrow that indicates that there is a kind of fish that 
actually swim upright near the eelgrass. So what they do is actually they try to swim upright and then they try to pretend the eelgrass so that they can escape from the predators because some predators like bigger fish or even sharks, they might not see very clearly or distinguish whether it is an eelgrass or even it is a pipefish. So some animals like pipefish, they try to use their body structure, their body shape in order to escape from the sight of the predators. So it is so cool as well. Yeah, I see a lot of you are actually know where to find the pipefish. Yay! So apart from pipefish, can you try to think of, is there any uh, other animals that use body shape in order to do camouflage to outsmart their predators? Not only in ocean, but also on land as well. Oh, it's a pipefish dangerous. Um, for, it depends on species. Some, so for uh, the species here near the Stanley Park, we do, we do not find them toxic or they are actually part of the environment or the habitat. So yeah, uh, I would say I love to see them while uh, I was snorkeling around and then also try to dive in and check if there's any pipefish or even other kind of animals too. <gasps> Ooh. So for the question that I raised just now about the body shape that can outsmart the predators, actually for stick bug inside the forest, they do try to mimic or try to pretend to be a part of the tree branches in order to survive because they're birds that try to eat them every day. So they can try to pretend to be a stick as well. Yeah. That's very smart of you. Whoa, that's all great answer too. I like it. <laughs> and the last one is that um, we have an other kind of animals that is our, our aquarium that I like the most and is a relatively new species to the world as well. So it only be being found in late 80s and it's called a frog fish. So have everybody, uh, is everybody uh, learned about like um, the, fro the uh, frog fish before? <laughs> yeah, for frog fish, they are very cute. And if you take out, take out your fist, if you put it into your fist, it's actually the size of the fist for a frog fish. And you can only be, uh, you can only find them near Australia or even Indonesia. So it's very special. And scientists keep on finding them uh, in every way that they could do because they are really good at doing camouflage. So let me give you um, another look of the frogfish, and you will see why I would say they are really good at doing camouflage. Let me check. Right. So this is the frogfish. It's the size of a golf ball. And if you take a look at the shape of it or the structure or the body, uh, the body structure, you will see there will be pumpy bumps and also it's rough on the skin. And it kind of look like the, um, the environment around it as well. So I'm trying to play this video to you and try to take a look at its movement. So now you can see it crawl around, the move around is a kind of uh, fish called the frog fish. They are really poor swimmer. They cannot swim really, really fast, but this is one of their strengths. So what they do is they would try to stay on rocks and sponge that looks like them. So they kind of uh, mimic to sponge and also rock around them. And they move really, really slowly. Yeah. And then for scientists who first found them, um, they usually, uh, they name it as frogfish 
just because they look like, when they stay still, they just like a frog. So that's why they're called frogfish. But what they are really, really good at is that they try to pretend part of the animals like sponge that we call mimicry. So mimicry is thing that um, animals, they try to pretend to be an other kind of animals so that they can pre, uh, protect themselves and escape from predators. But for frogfish, they are actually top predators. So what they do is actually they try to move very slow. They try to blend in to be part of the sponge. And when sw well, fish swim nearby, and the frogfish will open the mouth as large as the size, and then they try to swallow the whole fish as a whole and swallow into the stomach at once. So this is one of the coolest thing that I learned about frogfish. Even though they're small, but they try to have um, um, camouflage on their body so they look like the sponge. And let's see if I can find you an other picture that looks, that explain more about it. Let me check. All right, so here you go. So some of our friends actually asked, do they have good eyes? They do. So they try to use their eyes in order to look around and then they will try to swallow the whole fish at, at once. Um, if you take a look at the picture right now, the left hand side would be the frogfish and then the right hand side would be the sponge, which actually if you compare the two animals together, their, um, their surface are kind of similar and yeah, some of the um, some of the frogfish can hide near the sponge, and some of the frogfish actually mimics the look that sea cucumber has as well. So they try to be they, they are black in color. They try to find like um, algae algae on um, somewhere near their homes, and then they try to put it onto their um, body so that they try to mimic a sea cucumber so that they can hide themselves and wait for the prey or fish to come by and they eat it at once. Yeah, that is so cool. So I saw from um, the comment box that um, there is a question, how old can they live up to? Um, they can actually live up to 10 years old or even older, but the scientists are actually finding more information for that because um, for what we know is that Rockfish, they should have a lot of species around the world, but um, because they have a very nice camouflage. So for rockfish, it is very difficult for a scientist to really find them. Yeah. So, There's Melly, do you want to? Quite a few questions that I wrote down as the students were so amazed at what you were showing them. Do you mind if we stopped for a yeah. few questions? Sure. Okay, the first one, Callie asked, um, do sharks have bones? Oh, that's a really good question. So I want you to touch your jaw bones here. Try to touch it. And then it's hard, it's the bones that we human have. And I want you to touch your nose a little bit. Try to touch it, try to move it. It's relatively soft. So for this part, we will call it uh, cartilage. And for sharks, they are actually having similar cartilage in their bodies to make it even lighter and less dense so that they can swim really fast and they can actually um, having their buoyancy very, uh, at a very nice uh, situation. And then for the jaw, it's actually made of, of bones. So I would say for sharks, they have both bones and cartilage, but for cartilage, it's important for them because they need it to swim and find prey. <laughs> That's excellent, thank you. And another question about sharks, and I've never heard this one before. It's a unique question, a really great wondering. Why are sharks' tummies flat? Oh, for some species, I would say because they tend to live near the sandy shore. So what they do is actually they try to stay near the sand 
and then they can hide themselves. But for most of the sharks, they have streamlined body. So it makes them to swim even faster with even with the help of the cartilage. So um, as time goes by, as evolution goes by, the sharks tends to have flattened body so that they can swim even faster and being more sneaky. <laughs> and being more sneaky, that's the best part of it. Yeah. Now this is a really cool question. Um, does, does the animal know it's camouflaging itself? Does it have to think about that or does it happen naturally? It's a very great question. So for, my, uh, for what I know, they actually have instinct. Uh, it's kind of a natural reaction for them. Yeah, so um, for a octopus, they will have um, pigment cells on their body. So it will react right away when light changes. So um, yeah, it's like, it's kind of like an instinct for them, instinct. For them. Oh. So it's like an instinct. That's great. This is a cool question from Brock, age five, who loves sharks. How much food does a shark eat each day? Ooh, I don't have an exact number of that, but for our sharks here, um, we feed it every day in the morning and also at the end of the day as well. So what they eat is squid and also some fish. So our dedicated staff here, they prepare like a a bucket of fish, and then they will try to keep feeding the sharks during the feeding time so that they can have much more energy to swim around and to make sure they do not eat or try to prey on other fishes that we have in this gallery. So to make it more like feeling satisfied. <laughs> okay, and this, this is another great question because I think we are going to have a little session about this um, in a couple of weeks. How are how do sharks have babies? Ooh, that's, that's a very good question. So for sharks, it depends on species. So some of the sharks they actually lay a case. So the case is like this size, and we call it the mermaid's uh, mermaid's bag because it's just like a little handbag that mermaid would like to carry. And then there will be an egg yard inside, and then there will be a baby shark, which uh, absorb, uh, absorb the nutrients inside that uh, pocket. And then they will try to escape from that pocket and then to be uh, free in the ocean. So this is one of the method. Another method is that they will try to, uh, the shark will bond life young. So they develop inside mommy's tummy, and then they will just come out as an individual, as a baby shark, and they swim with their mommy as well. And then the third one is a bit complicated. So they try, um, for some sharks, they have egg inside their body, but that egg, they will just try to develop into a baby shark. And then after that, after months of time, they will come out as an individual instead of an egg. So there's three kinds of them. One is uh, born life young. Second is to uh, hatch from an egg case. And then the third one, which is the most complicated one, is to hatch from mommy's tummy. And then they will just come out as a new baby shark. <laughs> Wow, that's interesting. That's really, uh, really, really interesting. <laughs> There's a question about the frogfish. What do they eat from Cali? Oh, frogfish actually eat all kinds of fish. So it depends on the size. So um, very interestingly, for frogfish with this size, they can actually uh, open their mouth like two times as their size. So it's very big. So they can eat something that is larger than them and they just stay calm every day every moment and wait for the better chance in order to capture those little fish as once yeah so this is and, something that i like <laughs> Andis would like to know all of a sudden the questions are coming right in candace would like to know if seahorses can camouflage and if they can't why not Ooh. Actually for seahorse, they do have camouflage on them. So uh, if you think about the structure, it's actually similar to a pipefish. And a cool fact for you guys is that uh, pipefish and seahorse are actually relatives. So from that, I want you to really think, 
are sea horses having the camouflage? And what kind of camouflage do they have? That's cool. So they'll think about that. So a question from Katie and Angelina, do sharks teeth fall out easily? Hmm, this is a very good question indeed. Um, for uh, sharks, they try to have hundreds or even thousands of teeth on their jaw bones. So when they try to eat a fish, when they tear off the, the whole body, they accidentally lost some teeth as well. So what sharks do is actually they have teeth back up in their jaw bones. So when those teeth are removed because of a tearing action, those teeth will replace the removed one and to keep um, the sharks having the ability to find prey and capture them at once as the top predators up the food chain. And they are the top predators. Okay, how does an octopus have babies and how do jellyfish have babies and do they lay eggs? Ooh, that's a very good question. So octopus, they will lay eggs. So they will, um, so they will have eggs that is in the open water, but sometimes they will attach to some of the plants or even rocks or even other uh, safe objects so that they will try to develop and absorb a lot of different kind of nutrients and then to turn into babies. For jellyfish, they will have something called polyps. So uh, it's just like a flower-like structure. So they will uh, develop and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So they will detach from this flower-like structure and become a small jellyfish. Oh, wow. And going back to jellyfish, why do they, why would they sting people? Ooh. It's actually a kind of protection measure that they have because uh, apart from the transparent body that they have, they actually have stinging cell. So when there's something that wants to attack them, like a fish or even a uh, shark, they will try to fire some chemicals from their stinging cells in order to protect themselves. So this is one of their way in order to survive in such an open water area. So that's a good question. That's a great question. We have so many and they're going so fast, but this one's got, this is an interesting one because there's one right behind you, or it was, are stingrays mammals? And how do you tell the difference between a mammal and a fish? Ooh, that is a really nice question to talk about because um, scientists are very, uh, interesting in knowing all the animals and one of the things that scientists try to classify uh, to do is to classify all animals into different categories so for stingray they're actually relatives to sharks so that means stingray and sharks are fish and for they're not mammals but for whales happens to be in the ocean they are mammals so what do we well, what we can do in order to really distinguish those mammals and fish is that we're trying to look at different body structure. So like mammals, they have hairs and they actually uh, born alive young animals instead of laying eggs. And for fish, they have similar shape like this kind of fish and they lay eggs for most of the time and they do not have hairs, but instead they have scales on their body. So these are some of the characteristics that we can use in order to classify the animals. But of course, we have more and more kind of things to look at in order to really distinguish different kind of species. Excellent. Um, and since we're talking about camouflage, how do squids camouflage themselves? Cool. So, Octopus and squid are actually relatives as well. They are coming from the same family. So what they do is um, they have color pigment on their skin as well. So if you try to buy a squid and then you come home and try to do the dissection and take a look at the outer appearance, what I do is I, I actually try to rub the skin a bit. And then you will see as I rub the skin, um, it, the pigment cells start to become darker and darker. 
because uh, it kind of tried to take a look at the light and the shading and change of colors, change of light, so that they try to mimic the environment and try to mimic the background that they have. So for squid, they are actually similar to octopus, that they have pigment cells called chromatophores. That's a big word. Hmm. Yes, yeah. I've seen. I've seen you guys do that experiment as, when you do the squid dissection. So that's really an interesting thing. Um, we've got a lot of questions about the number of eggs that different um, animals, uh, different fish, lay. So maybe you can give us an example of a different, uh, like how many eggs a, a sea turtle would lay, how many eggs a jellyfish would lay, and how many eggs a shark would lay. Wow. So it depends on the species. So for sharks, they are really uh, good at produce pr reproduction. So some of the sharks, they actually lay uh, 100 of eggs or even only 50 of eggs of that. And some of the sharks, they actually uh, born live young for uh, two live young at once. And for jellyfish, it's uncountable because they can actually release of millions of eggs at a time. Yeah, so it depends on the species, but for sea turtles, I know that they lay 100 or even like 200, 300 eggs at a time when they reach the beach and dig their holes. Oh, wow, and maybe you could tell us something, and then we'll go back to your presentation, but maybe you can tell us a cool fact about seahorses and their eggs and who looks after them. Oh, that is a cool question. And this is the most interesting part that I had when I was a young kid as well. So for seahorse, it's very important for us to really look at um, their habitats and also their uh, families. So for female seahorse, they are the one who, um, they are the one who find food and then also to really take a look at the, the family. Um, but for um, seahorses, they are actually having male who release the individuals, uh, seahorses. And what they do to protect themselves is that they try to use their tail to hang around some grass and also uh, branches that um, their habitat have in order to ensure that they're at the same position for a long time without they being disturbed by the sea current. So because of their slim, body structure, they can actually mimic to be kind of a branch or even this, uh, the sea grass around them so that they can protect themselves and also their babies. Cool. So Nicole, were there any other facts that you wanted to share with the students or do you want to just take some more questions? Um, I would like to take this chance to really um, talk about camouflage a bit more um, because uh, we have different kind of habitats here in the world. and different habitats, they have rocks or even sea grass in order for um, those animals to live in, to protect themselves. But nowadays we have human activities that causes damage to those ecosystems. Just like we have overfishing issue, we put a very heavy net to the bottom of the sea, and then we use a very strong force from the ship in order to drag everything from the sea bottom to the net and to harvest for our own needs. So uh, by that means a lot of different kind of animals and also their habitats are being destroyed and we do not have corals, we do not have seagrass on th that particular uh, place anymore. So for us, it is important for us to really think of actions in order to uh, help those animals so that they can live inside those healthy habitats and try to do their superpowers, try to hide themselves and try to let us see more interesting part of the ocean. So I encourage all of you to really take to look more for information uh, about the ocean, how they actually live together uh, with human and also with the habitat. Um, here we have um, an ocean literacy platform that all of you can actually get access to and then try to learn more about the ocean. So if you go to the website called education.ocean.org, 
and later I will type it in and then you will see there will be a learning platform for you to do some games and also assignment and some video games as well so that you can try to learn more about the ocean and we do have a YouTube channel as well so every video is only uh, cost you like five minutes or, more, uh, or less so you can just click on those uh, video and to learn more about how we can actually protect the ocean that's awesome to know Nicole so that after the session the students can go to education.ocean.org mm -hmm. That's right. And also look up the Vancouver Aquarium and, and there's lots of learning tools on that site as well, as well as OceanWise. Um, so we'll just take a, a couple more questions because we have about 10 more minutes. So, okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see how fast uh, Katie and Mally can keep up and Nicole. I'm, I'm glad you're having fun too, Chris, uh, Tristan, I am too. Are frog fish extinct? That's they're our actually list. still here around the world. Um, they are not extinct, but it's relatively new to scientists um, because they're really good at camouflage. And so for scientists, they keep on using their strength and using their technology to find all those fish. And yeah, it's very important to, for us to really work with those scientists by helping them to protect our, our ocean. Excellent. And this question's come up a couple times. Um, how much water do you put in your tanks? <laughs> what kind of water is this? Yeah, that is a very good question. I don't have like, the exact number here, uh, but I could tell it's like more than tons. And um, every day our, our dedicated staff actually try to monitor the water quality here and try to make sure all the water um, environment uh, is good for all the animals here. So I don't have the exact number, but I am sure we have the largest uh, volume here uh, in North America. Yeah, absolutely. And Amanda wants to know how, oh, Roman, sorry, wants to know how big can a hammerhead shark get? Ooh. Um, for, to my knowledge, they can grow up to three meters long. So I love how they actually uh, having those hammer head structure on their body. And their two eyes are actually at the end of the hammer so that they can have more great vision to find their prey. And some cool thing is that they try to use the hammer hacks to chase after those fish and they try to push it to the ground and they can try to eat the whole fish. Wow. Um, Mally, the Sardino family would like to know, um, Ev, can you mute, please? The Sardino family would like to know when a shark leaves its mom, a baby shark. Cool. Um, for, um, I would say it's like two or three uh, months uh, before they are being hatched. Some of the species, they will stay in uh, the the parents uh, stomach for at least six months, I know. And then they will be being like released to the ocean and then they will uh, stay with their families a bit. I'm not sure what is the period uh, for the parenting, uh, the period, but uh, yeah, they, they did spend some time with their family before they uh, just uh, going apart. <laughs> And then um, somebody oh, wants to know, who, what is your favorite fish? <laughs> what is my favorite sea animals? Um, that's a really good question. I have a lot of animals on my mind, but the, uh, the coolest one that I would say is sea cucumber. Uh, it sounds so weird, but um, I like how they actually try to protect themselves by speeding out their guts at once so that they can outsmart their predators and they escape right away because they try to use this as a uh, last resort uh, protection for them but uh, it's very useful and I try I, I really take a look at how they eat they have tentacles on their head uh, on the upper side of the sea cucumber so that they can try to detect and try to grab those microorganisms and try to put it into their mouth. So I think they're coolest. 
And they certainly are cool. Um, one a really cool question is, Nicole, how come you know so much? Why do you know so much? What did you do to go to school for this? Thank you so much. So um, in my primary school and secondary school, we have science classes. So I tend to ask a lot of questions about ocean and also the nature. So I read a lot of books. I read a lot of, uh, I watch a lot of documentary ev uh, like every year. And um, but for my go-to website would be um, OceanWise and also YouTube channels uh, from WWF Hong Kong or different organizations, NGOs as well, because they have the latest uh, scientific investigation and results. And um, yeah, I do know more about ocean than on land, but yeah, it's my, uh, it's my hobby to learn more about the ocean. Awesome. And we'll take, uh, I'll, so why do, we'll take two more questions. Why do fish live underwater? Why are they adapted so well to live in water? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, for one of the classification for fish is that they have gills. So for a human, we actually breathe in air using our lungs. But inside water, they, our lungs doesn't work. So for fish, they use gills where they take in a lot of uh, water and inside the water, there will be this soft oxygen, which means oxygen is inside the water. So when those fish actually uptake all those water, they can get oxygen from it. So this is one of the classification that we are different from fish because they have gills and we have lungs. A couple of people asked that, what were the differences between fish and um, mammals and how do we know? And I guess the last question that we'll have to ask, I'm sorry guys, but we'll see if we can figure out a way for Nicole to um, answer, how can squids squirt ink in defense but octopus can't? Oh, actually for octopus and squid, they do have ink sac. So what is meant by that is that they have a little flaw with black pigment inside and um, they are inside the body. So when they have predators or even someone attacking them, they will try to squeeze those um, ink out of their body and try to make us like a smoke screen in order to, uh, to provide a very blurry image in front of the predators. And by that time, that octopus and squid, they can actually uh, swim away and escape from the scene so that the predators cannot find them anymore. So because of the slim body, because of um, uh, there is some body structure that helps to push water uh, from uh, around the area. So the squid and also octopus, they can escape right away. Oh, that's such cool. That is so cool. So that is really great. So Nicole, we want to all thank you. I'm reading the comments that the students learn so much that they love this, that they have their favorite animals, and we hope that they'll be able to continue learning. Um, maybe they'll connect with us again uh, by looking at the, the program when we do um, more sessions with OceanWise in the Vancouver Aquarium. If you have more questions, boys and girls, uh, there, there are places that you can look online. Uh, one of the places is on OceanWise and um, the Vancouver Aquarium. And we just really appreciate that you've been here today with us and have been so excited. Thank you so, so much, everyone. And thank you, Nicole. We'll see you later. Yeah, thank you very much and have a nice day everyone and everyone can, we can all give nicole a virtual high five and some applause and Yay. thank you so much thank you very much okay. bye, bye.